All right, all right. Good afternoon. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And here we are. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Gonna be getting started today on some King of the Hill action. <laughs> Crypt Horrors are pretty decent. Yeah, their mass blocking is one of the kind of their main features for sure, so. Um, yeah, so we're going to be getting started here. We've got A Move Hacker and Storm Runner in at first for the first round here. Tam and Ten. Got Felcon in the house, of course, Mezcal, Anti Mage, Rudolph. Welcome, welcome. Norse got 20 stack with trolls, because <laughs> you just listened to Lord Master's Throg vid. That's awesome. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad, King of the Dead. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so we're here. Just waiting on Stormrunner to get his faction pick locked in. We've got, uh, got the map pick. And, uh, yeah, the A-Move Hacker has gone with the Dwarves. I guess I can show you guys here. Not that. That's old. I can probably delete that one later. Um... Or, you know what? Here, let's just... Let's just delete that one right now. How about that? And yeah, let's see, let's see what here uh, Storm Runner's got here. He's got uh, got a few choices against the dwarves. Hello, hello, welcome. Good to see you. Looks like he's gonna go with Vampire Coast against the Dwarves. That's an interesting pick. Very interesting pick. Vampire Pirates. So we're gonna be in for a bit of a shootout. In the desert, that's an OK Corral style Old West shootout. Get the cowboy hats on. Yeehaw! <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hey, Tam and Ten coming in with another 10. Get this party started. Hit that like button. Show some love. Much appreciated, man. You're so generous. So, so generous. Is the music pretty loud? I, I, it's not as loud in my headphones. Let me, let me turn it down a little bit there. The proper banger, so... Yeah. Both sides melee troops all ranged. <laughs> yeah, I, should I waive the max 12 ranged rule for this battle? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think the dwarves probably win a shootout. I, th I don't think anyone can outshoot the dwarves. Like, the dwarves are the best shooting faction in the game, I think, by far. I don't know. What do you guys think? The, the Wood Elves are up there, but the Wood Elves can't outshoot the Dwarves, right? Like, the Vampire Coast, same thing. Coast is up there, but I don't think they can really outshoot the Dwarves. What do you think? I think the Dwarves are the best shooting faction in the game. I mean, it's not like they have a lot else. They have decently cost-effective armored infantry. They're not good on the offense, but they're great on defense. Um, which I guess is kind of the point, but yeah, I mean they were almost rely entirely on their shooting, so Yeah, I, I've if Storm Runner has picked into it. It's uh I mean, maybe he's got some ideas here, but Chaos Dwarfs. Oh, yeah, once we get the Chaos Dwarfs, they'll be able to possibly outshoot the Dwarfs Although we'll see I think they might have a little bit more of a melee focus because they'll have like some monsters and stuff too, right? Um I mean, granted, they're probably just going to be a better faction just all around than the dwarves, but we'll have to wait and see. What elves can outshoot the dwarves? I don't know about that. Yeah, see, the, the dwarves, dwarves have artillery, but the thing is, like, you can 
you can use that artillery to outshoot skirmishers at a range, and then, you know, you keep your army at a distance. I mean, granted, easier said than done, especially with the Wood Elves' mobility, but... I don't know, I th I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure the Wood Elves can't outshoot the Dwarves. Yeah, exactly, organ guns. <clears throat> yeah, fireballs are important. The Empire can't either. I mean, Empire's probably like three or four in terms of shooting. Um, they can't really either. Oh, these guys are waiting on me. I'm just chatting away. <laughs> Here we go. Get started. Fade that out. And here we go. Shields on cheap infantry, exactly. And they have shields on almost all their skirmishers as well. That's another thing. And they're they're unique in that fact, right? Like Thunderers, Corlers, Rangers all have shields, right? So it, that makes a huge difference. I mean, I guess Lothar and Seaguard for the High Elves have a shielded variant. But besides that... It is, uh, quite, quite rare indeed. Ogres? Ogres have really strong shooting from what I've heard. At least they did in tabletop. We'll see how ends up, how strong it ends up being practiced. Tomb Kings are another one, too, that have very, very strong shooting. And even the Lizardmen as well. Um, I mean, they even... Like, Greenskins also. Greenskin air boys are fantastic. They're probably, pound for pound, the best individual archer unit in the game, I would say. Can Dark Shards outshoot Dwarf Boxes? No. Dark Shards are not... Um, because they have a... They don't have a loose formation, they have a tight formation, they get destroyed by Dwarf Artillery and such. But, uh, let's have a look at what these guys have brought here. And, uh, yeah, for the Vampire Coast, we've got, uh, an Admiral with a pistol. Also got a Gunnery White. Looking like lots of uh, different effects there. We've got some carronades, uh, some deckhand mobs, sirens, and depth guard, bell bats, and a necrofex colossus. Very interesting build, I have to say. For a moves dwarfs, as I expected, lots and lots of bugmen's rangers and rangers. Uh, bugmen's are such a good unit. These guys, they basically have all of the possible effects in the game. Uh, they have. Uh, magic resistance, charge offense against large, vanguard deployment, stock, immune to psychology, and liquid fortification, which is basically a regeneration. So, like I said, they have all of the effects. Um, in particular, the stock, charge defense against large, vanguard, immune to psychology, regeneration is very important um, for their effect. Uh, you've got Trollhammer Torpedoes, Chaos Warriors... Looks like uh, the Skolder Guard, very nice regiment of renowned Iron Drakes. You don't see these guys too often, but they're sort of uh, the jack of all trades Iron Drakes, if you will. They don't have necessarily a bonus versus anything. They just deal a ton of armor piercing and explosive armor piercing damage. Uh, just a very powerful unit in general. So interesting, uh, interesting choices. Looks like we've also got the Ulthar's Raiders. They can sunder armor with their. Um, their effect here, which will make all of these crossbows more effective. And keep in mind, the crossbow units for the dwarves still do have very good AP values. They changed this in the uh, Hunter and Beast update last summer, but they have 6 AP per shot, as do Empire crossbows. And then, yeah, obviously the great weapons do a hilarious amount of missile damage, very short reload time, and a massive, uh, what, 32 missile damage total? So, great stuff. Great, great stuff. Chaos Warriors. Oh, I mean Dwarf Warriors. They're Chaos Dwarf Warriors. There we go. I that's I had the Chaos Dwarfs on my mind. That's my excuse. Just excited for game three, guys. 
And the Dragon Max are definitely a good pick here. Two Slayers. Uh, pretty much always you need one to two Slayers in every single matchup. Except I guess if you're in a Dwarf Mirror. But even then, having an unbreakable fast unit might not be bad. Flamethrower Iron Drakes are good against low armor infantry. Uh, flame Cannons are just good against infantry in general. <clears throat> yeah, any anytime you're gonna face a lot of low armor, high value infantry, um, that's where you want your your Iron Drakes, or even to roast out low leadership units like against like Goblin Hordes. Um, the Iron Drakes, the Fire Drakes, that is, can be very useful there as well. Let's see, the cannons are going to be opening up on the Skolder Guard, but you can see how they're in spaghetti formation. Um, I mean, granted, if they get hit by a cannonball, it will, uh, you know, kill an individual model there, but it's only going to kill one model at a time. And you can see how A-Move is pushing forward here. Stormrunner is making a pretty massive mistake, and he is going to get all of his artillery pieces killed very, very quickly. Uh, because a move hacker is going to be able to get up get in range with these rangers and just open up and absolutely destroy the very light uh, zombie crews here you can see the deckhand mobs trying to push forward to shut that down but yeah the scolder guard definitely taking a pounding a little bit unfortunate i was hoping to see them get some good action in but uh good use of the cannons there to go after a relatively high value target looks like we're gonna have a uh, wind of death here potentially this might do some pretty good damage. Oh, yeah, that overcast wind of death just deletes two units of rangers, more or less. Did quite a bit of uh, damage to a third. Now, that's a pretty good amount of gold value just with those two. I still don't know. If that was an overcast wind of death. That's a lot of winds of magic. So I just still don't know that that was necessarily worth it in terms of winds of magic. But uh, still pretty good stuff. You can see, though, that the carronades here, uh, one of the unit down to only one... Uh, cannon model left that being said the necrofex and this kind of missile death star here staying very tight and able to dish out a ton of damage the scolder guard are pretty much going to be done for uh, before they even get involved that being said this dawi center is pushing forward pretty aggressively here uh the dwarf warriors i mean they don't have the best offensive stats in the world but i mean they're just fighting zombies to be honest they still will be able to cut through that pretty efficiently there and be able to get in and potentially shut down this backline area and i'm not sure what, exactly what's happening here if there's like a friendly fire situation or if someone's shooting here i don't see anyone shooting here so i don't know exactly what destroyed that third carronade i'm wondering if that was like a friendly fire situation there but uh, regardless, the F Admirals come forward now, going to get marked by Ulthar here, and uh, the Trollhammer Torpedoes are going to open up. The Trollhammer Torpedoes in particular will do a ton of damage, but because of the staggered animation kind of going side to side there, they didn't all make the best contact. But a pretty good situation for the Vampire Coast. That being said, look at all of that fire coming in, even just that little bit of crossbow fire, the throwing axes and everything, doing a good amount of damage. Um, yeah... Dwarves are kind of able to beat back. It looks like there were some hounds that maybe came in for a backline charge, but relatively easily taken care of. The Depth Guard and the Sirens are going to come forward with the, the destroyed Carronade crew and block this unit of Dwarf Warriors from, uh, from coming through. Just intercede directly through the fire arcs there as they're continuing to pound those Trollhammer torpedoes. So definitely good use of the cannons in terms of going after high-value uh, small kind of low model count targets, although they're not necessarily large. Uh, still, you know, in each individual model that you take out from those Iron Drakes is a significant amount of their stopping power. So definitely a good take them out. Dwarf Warriors trying desperately to get into this back line here, but it's just not, not quite enough. That being said, the Slayers are pushing through. The zombies that were blocking are just about done. We've got two groups of Slayers here that are just about full health that can push through into this back line. And there's not a lot that these Carronades have that can protect at this point. I mean, I guess uh, potentially there's a couple more zombie summons in the pocket here, but I'm not really seeing too much. The problem I do think the Dwarves are going to have, there's not a lot of great tools for taking out these Sirens. Um, there, like, there's no magic damage whatsoever on this Dwarf roster. Um, I mean, Belagar does not do magic damage. No, he does ha have high enough weapon strength that... You know, and if he gets them isolated, and obviously you could beat them with army losses, but you can see very nice use of the crossbows there, shutting down that carronade. The slayers then come in, shut down the second carronade, and uh, yeah, they need to be careful not to fight the depth guard. Depth guard will just destroy slayers. That's going to be a really bad engagement. I mean, granted, they'll be able to do some damage in return, but 
yeah, a little bit of a rough situation there. That being said, the Slayers are pulling all of these supporting elements in. That means the rest of the entire Dwarf army is able to actually come through and occupy this artillery position, shut down the Carronades, which is a pretty significant loss there. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there's still... The, these Depth Guard are potentially dangerous. They could get in here and cut up a lot of these uh, Rangers still. But uh, this is dangerous also for the Necrofex. It's got a little bit more ammo. Belagar's coming in all angry, but we've got a lot of these rangers are now starting to get in range um, of this Necrofex here. And here come the Trollhammer torpedoes as well. The few of them that remain, <clears throat> because of this massive hitbox, will be able to make easy contact. Oh, cannon models take damage from crumbling as well. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. I guess I didn't notice they're crumbling. Huh. Funny. Anyway. A little bit of friendly fire coming in there with the throwing axes, but it's not the biggest deal at the end of the day. The uh, the Slayers are continuing to deal some damage, and you can see that the Admiral and the Gunnery Whites are getting very low as well. I guess just the one Gunnery White. But yeah, they're a nice volley. Finishes off the Admiral, so the magic support is going to be gone for the Vampire Coast, and that may be GG. We'll see. Again, there's not a lot of tools to finish off the Sirens here. I probably should focus fire on the Depth Guard, honestly, to try and save these Slayers as much as he can. But uh, Belagar comes in here, and he's... He, despite his lack of magic damage, is the answer. Just an absolute unit going to be just pounding away at these Sirens here. Slayers fighting side by side with no fear, of course. They ain't scared of no ghosts. But the crumbling damage will be enough to do it, and it does look like these Sirens are being forced into crumbling as the balance power starts to take a little bit of a turn there. There's just a couple of troll hammers left, but it is going to be enough to throw, uh, you know, a few torpedoes in there. That ranger fire is really what's just soaking it in. You can see the abandoned ship as the poop deck drops. And, uh, yeah, the Necrofex is also crumbling. Well, that's GG for the Dwarves, and as mentioned before, this is a, a definitely an av advantageous matchup for the Dwarves, at least in my eyes. So this is probably one of the harder matchups for the Coast, but still, an interesting build. Definitely like the idea. I just don't know that you necessarily have quite enough to protect. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the Skolder Guard just got blasted there. I was, I was hoping to see them in action for sure, but they got absolutely... Blasted. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the... The Necrofax actually ended up being pretty decent because he, it was left kind of to its own devices for a while, but eventually there just wasn't enough to protect here. Honestly, I think for Stormrunner, you maybe cut one of these scurvy dogs and cut both of these bats and just bring more zombies on the ground. I mean, maybe you have one bat to disrupt gyrocopters, but I would think it's a little bit better off to just go with more meat shields on the ground. Like, yes, you probably want one hound for chasing routing units, or maybe you just cut both the hounds and just take the bats for ra uh, routing, chasing routing units. But I think just going a little bit wider with more meat shields is really what you need uh, there. So, yeah... King of the Dead going to be up next. Get him in here. Hey, what's up, Impractical Jokers? Four sirens, huh? I'm, yeah, maybe that could work. <laughs> won the gunfight though you did you did you did win the gunfight to be fair he brought like a hundred crossbows to a gunfight which i don't think is necessarily fair actually i say to be fair i don't think that is fair i think that's cheating i don't know what do you think you brought what like 12 guns all in total
Um, that's a good, that's a good point, Edmonton. That's a good point. Okay. Queen Bess is good against the dwarves. It is to yes on certain maps, especially. Um, if there's a map with an interrupted line of sight, so you can guarantee that you're not at risk of Dawi cannons, then it's really good on those maps. Sorry, I'm just getting some text real quick, dealing with some IRL stuff. Um, I actually thought I was going to need to be done soon, but it turns out that a meeting I had scheduled today is now cancelled. So, I will be able to stream basically all day, pretty much. Um, just got to reply to this real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay. A <laughs> cannon mounted on a living ship is a gun. If it if it uses gunpowder, then it counts. That's the rule I always had. So like even miners with, with blasting charges count. Even iron drakes or iron breakers technically count because they have they have um. Uh, blasting charges, right? Which use powder, so. Ghost ships are quite OP. <laughs> <clears throat> Oakenhammer. Okay, that's a decent map. I can take that one. Smart <laughs> guy, thing guys, revenge. Yes. Always more bloated corpses. Both of those are valid arguments, and both of the, these things are true. See, I think what you need to do is take like, uh, you take a gun. A, a pistol admiral on a crab, two gunnery whites with nothing on crabs. Then you take two giant crabs and, or you know what? Ah, uh, according to banner rules, you'd have to do one giant crab and one necrofex, and then the rest bloated corpses. But the Pistol Admiral has to be Lore of Deeps, right? So then you can cast Van Guy's Revenge on the inevitable blob. <laughs> yes. Don't try to outshoot the dwarves is good advice. Oh yeah, I haven't looked at that Engelbert's Funhouse, Shetland. I, I need to look at that. If there are some if there is a powder only challenge, I will I'll take that one. I'll, I'll take that one. I'd have to look at the rules for it, but I mean, potentially for the Empire, you can make some all right builds with all powder units since Free Company are like kind of decent in melee. Um, and I mean, if the steam tank counts, if the steam tank counts, then I can make a viable list for sure for the Empire. <laughs> I don't know about versus all but dwarves. I think they have a couple of other matchups that are not that great, but I do think they're the number one faction in the game probably still. We'll see. I'm so excited for game game three, Felcon. Are you are you gonna be a corn? I feel like you are a corn player for sure. Like if of, of the like obviously within the four chaos gods, I feel like you're definitely a corn a corn guy. 
I'm definitely a Zinch guy. Like I like I like the magic. I like the weird stuff. And so I'm I think I'm gonna be down for Zinch things. Definitely Aerocrastic is I mean he's a, a, Sl a Slanesh fanboy already since he loves Sigvald so much, right? So And then I guess Turin likes Nurgle. Zinch, okay. Alright. Man of good taste then. <laughs> Evil cackle. Flamethrowers. Yeah, true. True that. True that. Any any faction with fire, I'm down for, pretty much. Which I mean, granted, I guess corn does also have fire. But like Zinch has like you said, flamethrowers. Flying flamethrowers, right? <laughs> Nurgle. Nurgle's a Nurgle's a jolly fellow. He he's he's a loving a loving dude, you know. <laughs> Nurgle, <laughs> Nurgle the bro. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The fifth Chaos God is the Horned Rat. Don't even at me. That's that's already decided. That, I, that that's not that's not my decision to make. The fifth the fifth Chaos God is already the Horned Rat, right? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think Zinch is probably going to be the most well balanced of all the Chaos Demon armies. I mean, I guess we'll have to see. I'm very interested to see kind of how their different playstyles are. I mean, obviously Corn, I'm expecting to be the rush, like the I I think they're obviously I don't know about obviously, but I think they will be the best rush faction in the game, like the best pure rush faction in the game. Um, even better than Greenskins, which right now I think Greenskins are probably the best. Maybe Norsk is tied for a close second, but... Ah, uh, psh, nobody cares about him, Malal. Who cares? He's not in the game. I mean, rats are not in the game either, but... Okay, let's actually talk about these builds here. For the Tomb Kings, we've got Ark in the Black and a Necrotect with a Casket of Souls, two Necropolis Knights with Halberds, which is strange, I guess. Uh, we've also got some Skeleton Spears, Tomb Guard up front, and, uh, yeah, some Carrion in the air, rushing over immediately to attack some Ripper Dactyls. Now, Carrion do count as infantry size, so these Ripper Dactyls are going to... Shred them, I think? Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is all what we wanted to see, is uh, King of the Dead just absolutely throwing away his carrion here, one by one, because he, he there's no way that he can, like, mass enough numbers here to be useful against these rippers. And, I mean, granted, the rippers do have pretty poor defensive stats in general, but uh, there's no way. I mean, these ripper dactyls, there's even a secondary group of them. The Colossodon Hunters being completely left alone, and a third group... These are Predactyls that can get in come in mostly unopposed here. Old Crocky G is leading the way. You don't see him too often. We've got some Temple Guard here, Star Chamber Guardians, and uh, some Source Warriors with shields out on the flanks. I like this uh, Lizardman build quite a bit. I especially love that. Oh, man. One Spear Leech and the Ripper Dactyls lost. That's so sad. That's so sad. They were doing so good. <coughs> They were doing so good. Anyway. Crocky G immediately comes in for a hit and run. And the Colossodon Hunters are going to swoop down in a rear charge action on these uh, 
on these Necropolis Knights with Halbers. Now let's see how they do. Necropolis Knights are getting absolutely butchered, but likewise, then the uh, second group of Necropolis Knights tries to charge in to attack the Colossodon Hunters. It's just a giant mess right now, and Krogkar is having a grand old time right in the center. It looks like we've got to summon skeletons right on top of this giant blob as well. Will it be enough to actually save those Necropolis Knights, though? Necropolis Knights did take quite a bit of damage there. It looks like they got the uh, Lever Mortis effect. They'll be able, able to regenerate some of that HP. Unfortunately, the Colossodon Hunter's very expensive unit did take quite a bit of damage there as well, but uh, Tomb Guard getting absolutely crumped by Star Chamber Guardians here. Looks like we've got a big old Soul Blight. But a uh, couple Temple Guard fighting in here now. That giant AP anti-large damage will be very, very useful. You can see the, the uh, Casket of Souls kind of dunking in there. Um, definitely need to shut that down, but at the same time, King of the Dead doing a good job keeping his cavalry in reserve here. Yes, exactly. Needs to countercharge these Colossodon Hunters when they come down to the ground. He then pins them in on the other side with the carry in there, so very nice play. Uh, Krokar doing a pretty good amount of damage, but he's kind of getting distracted by some of these uh, low-tier skeletons at the moment. And unfortunately, losing out on that very expensive Air Force is definitely going to be tough in terms of value. That being said, Krokar is still relatively healthy. And we've still got plenty of Wind Blast potential here, as another Wind Blast rips through that front line. Uh, potentially, Krokar, with the support of these Temple Guard, can still beat the uh, Acropolis Knights here, but those Tomb Guard are hanging on for a very long time. Uh, yeah. Oh man, the Hand of the Gods just blasts that Necrotech as he is going after the poor little Skink Priest there, and it looks like uh, Krokar is going to come over and finish that Necrotech off, which is a pretty nice little get there. Saurus on the flank here are also quite indomitable. They're just uh, cutting through uh, units over time here. We do have a Fate of Buna on that Temple Guard there. Uh, very nice use of the damage scaling. Uh, yeah, 75 models isn't the best scaling in the world, but it's still pretty good. Definitely will do a lot of HP damage there, but the Caskets having to run uh, now from the Soros Warriors and the Necropolis Knights being used against them. Not the most efficient use, and the Star Chamber Guardians also pushing through. Rockar now has an opportunity to get back here uh, himself and potentially go after the Casket of Souls, but is it a bait? Now all the Necropolis Knights come after him. He's going to pull back over here. He's got a Spirit Leech on him as well. Still got these two Temple Guard fighting over here, so uh, Krokar probably honestly needs to hook up and around and try and get back into uh, this position here, but it looks like a little bit of a misclick from King, rather than giving an attack order, actually gave a move order there, which is uh, not the best situation, but Krokar kind of hitting and running here, trying to get back, get in this Tomb Kings, and it looks like, uh, yeah, uh, a move throwing in the towel there as he was just about to get those Ushabti summoned right behind Krokar, and that would have pinned him in there. A very nice showing, but yeah, unfortunately that Air Force kind of threw it away a little bit. I mean, the, the initial engagement was excellent there, but just that one Spirit Leech Oh man, that was sad. I I I th I don't know. I I don't I I see when I play this matchup from the Tomb King side, like I have problems. Like it's not really that easy. I don't know. Yeah, I really unfortunately you, one of the, I think, are, are Ripper Dactyls one of the worst units in the game? I mean, they, they have their uses, don't get me wrong, but in terms of, like, getting your return for your value, I think maybe, like, one in ten games I see them in, they get their value. Yeah. Oh, is it 50? I thought it was I thought it was maxed out at 100. I think I'm thinking of Flock of Doom. I think Flock of Doom maxes out at 100. I want to say it's like 100 or 90. Yeah, interesting. Okay, it's 50 models. Learn something new every day. All right, let's see who's up next on the list. Okay.
Yeah, rippers are... Yeah, they're made of paper, not only versus any ranged, but even versus like a low tier spear infantry, they'll they'll kind of get shredded in a lot of situations. Or like they get charged by any cavalry with more than like 30 charge bonus. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're just so, so squishy. Uh, da, da, da. Hey Falcon, you wanna jump in? My uh my person who is next on the list just said they are slightly delayed. They asked to be moved one spot down, so you wanna jump in real quick? I can PM you the password. Or I guess I could jump in and fight King of the Dead. Ugh. Get some music going here while we're waiting. Reinstalling. <laughs> oh man. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> well, I guess I can jump in then. <laughs> Must entertain. Uh, yeah, I guess I could. Or Shetland, if you want to jump in, I guess you could as well. Make Falcon bet his other kidney. <laughs> yeah, you might you might need that for later, maybe. Later. All right, I guess I'll jump in. Let's see. Only vampire mirrors, no. I refuse. We could get Aristo in. Aristo, here, you, you come fight King of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, here, you come on in. I'll PM you the password. I will I'll throw it to you on Discord. Oh, no, come on in, come on in. I I'll just, uh, yeah, no problem. Pistolier's OP, 100%. <laughs> yeah, the delay, it is a little bit of a, a delay. It is a little bit of a delay. Uh, just, a, just a tad. Yes. <laughs> and no worries, tricks. No worries. It takes some. It takes some time to learn.
Well, well, Daniel, I'll, I'll say this. You can join if you want to. Just keep in mind the level of competition is pretty high. Like, these are pretty experienced players. So if you don't mind getting thrashed, I mean, if you, like... I'm not I'm not being rude or anything, but if you consider yourself a newer player, you know, if you if you don't mind being thrashed in front of a bunch of people, then by all means <laughs> feel free, but these guys are very good players, so uh <laughs> How many players in this Koth? Well, right now there's only uh there's only let's see, a few more here. Yeah, right now I've only got uh, one more on the list, so yeah, now is the time if you do want to join. Yeah, yeah, and the the cool thing about the King of the Hills too is it's not like because there's no prize involved, like it's not quite as on competitive, like quite on the same level as tur as tournaments. Grimmenhagen. <laughs> I, I veto the map choice. I, I refuse. Suffering builds character. How do you join? Um, how about this? If you if you are on Discord, you join this Discord server, and then you just have to be in that Discord server. To, you'll see the announcements when I post them. But you just PM me on Discord, and uh, and I will get you on the list. Set cat's name to Sergeant Fluffy Bum. I I agree with that. I can agree with that. Glooming wood. Uh. <laughs> uh. I I don't I'm not I don't know this map very well, so it's probably going to be terrible, but... Maybe not. Where is it on this list here? Oh yeah, that one's good. That one's good. This one is acceptable. FFA? Uh, FFAs take so long. Uh, don't get me wrong, I enjoy FFAs, but like, so the because since they removed army losses from FFAs, they take like 15 minutes at a minimum. So, maybe later, maybe later. I'm not saying we won't do it today. I'm saying I want to get some 1v1s, you know, get some get some flow in here. I'm totally just showing King's build on stream, by the way, right now, which is super pro. Um, so I guess we could do this. <laughs> All right, so we got Palpatine up next, and then Dan, you'll be after him. Or her. I mean, I guess Palpatine could be a her. I'm, I'm assuming it's a <laughs> No. Oh good, just as I put up the screen blocker, they're, uh, they get, they're ready to go. Okay. That's great. Well, uh, tricks. I'm gonna be putting out, um, a video within the next couple days 
of what I consider to be each faction's like good and bad matchups. So just stay tuned for my to my channel, I guess. <laughs> You'll see uh it's probably gonna be coming out. Let's see, what is today? Today's Thursday. If I if rather than streaming today, if I take some time and work on that, I can probably have it done tomorrow or Saturday. Um and then that will at least give you a baseline reference of like what most players would, would consider to be each faction's good and bad matchups. Yeah, Tomb Kings, Tomb Kings is probably the easiest faction to learn. Um, they have a pretty well balanced roster like they have basically each unit type covered pretty much They don't have like real heavy cavalry, but they you have cavalry um, So you have all your unit types covered so you'll learn like Each unit's role like how to use different units of different roles um, and They're undead so you don't have to worry about you know leadership because they just aren't they don't partake in that mechanic whatsoever and then, um, uh, and yeah, they're really strong. Like, they're just strong across the board. They have pretty cost-effective units for the most part. I mean, their lower-tier infantry isn't wildly cost-effective, but it's basically unbreakable, right? So, I, I think Tomb Kings are a good, good faction for beginners. Um, yeah, so, let me post here the rules... So you can look over them. We're using Aerocrastic's banner rules. So let's get this here. And here are the rules in that, uh, that document there. And let's go ahead and edit this here. Cool. Cool, cool. Let's have a look at these builds here. And we'll also turn the turn the music down since you know, these guys are just about ready to get started. And they're actually off, so on the fly here we've got Beasts of Tashnar along with some Norsk and Warhounds, a flying manticore up in the air. Uh, looks like some wind wolves, some ice wolves. Got some champs up front. Uh, let's go champs. Couple javs. Three champs. Very small infantry force, but elite. I like that. Uh, more skin wolves. Werekins. As for the wood elves, we've got up in the air here. It looks like a glade lord. Three glade riders. And uh, yeah, nice tree box in the woods. We've got uh, several units of treekin, wildwood rangers. Looks like uh, eternal guards. And uh, yeah, uh, branch wraith. So. A tree box in the woods with a skirmish force and it looks like the beast of Tashnar moving up in a column formation here gonna get hit by a single arrow and then run away so that's quite the sequence of events right there and uh, yeah you can see King of the Dead here pulling up starting to throw some javelins in here we'll keep it in nice cinematic cam in the woods pretty cool shot with the I love the Firebrock elders they're probably one of the coolest looking units in the game you gotta wonder though that this is a fire hazard, <laughs> having these guys in these trees here. I mean, I guess it is raining right now, so no big deal. But uh, yeah, the wood elves doing some good skirmishing. Both sides kind of just shooting each other ineffectually through the woods, which is hilarious. I mean, I guess they could just stand here and not shoot each other effectively for a few minutes and then run out of ammo. But it does look like actually the glade riders are going to be pushing forward and engaging the champs and the. Uh, the Javs in melee here, so they kind of push forward, and then the dragon comes down, and the mobile box is pushing forward here. You can see the champs then kind of get drawn into the box as the glade riders then pull back through. So an interesting tactic here. <laughs> yep. Very interesting. I hear a Fate of Yuna going off. I'm assuming that's going to be on these Wildwood Rangers here. You can see the Norskin Ice Wolves pull up directly next to them, but don't actually appear to have an attack order. So, yeah. Oh, a beautiful boat just rips apart those Wildwood Rangers there, and uh, because they're right on the edge of the woods, 
Javelins might be able to get some good damage in on these Tree Kin. That being said, Tree Kin are taking very, very little damage. It looks like they are actually focusing on the Firebark Elders. This is an interesting choice for sure. I mean, that 120 armor, sorry, 90 armor only for the uh, Tree Kin will be pretty good, but it looks like the Ice Wolves and Skin Wolves are rushing around the side here trying to get in. Of course, Winter Heart Guards Unbreakable will hold out okay, but at those... Uh, and those Wilder Rangers got absolutely pounded there. A really nice breath attack, though, from the Glady takes out a good amount of HP on those uh, Skin Wolves and a really nice Helm of Discord as well, debuffing a ton of these units. I know I've said Glady several times. It is, in fact, a Glade Lord, male Glade Lord, with the Helm of Discord. Coming in with a massive debuff, uh, comes in and gets a good amount of damage in on these Skin Wolves. Let's see, they're down to 12 models here. And uh, these guys have 16 models still, so pretty good there. Uh, the Wood Elf infantry is pretty much all dead, I think. Yeah, for the most part, completely dealt with, which is not the best situation to be in. Uh, these Shriekin, I mean, they're, they're, they're good at holding. They just have zero offensive capability whatsoever. Um, so they're basically just going to wet and noodle these champions and just tickle them lightly. Um, the, the stopping power comes entirely from the Elven Infantry and this, this dragon here, so we'll see. We'll see how it ends up holding up. I mean, the Firebark Elders at least have a little bit of fire damage to give them some kind of bonus damage against the Skin Wolves, but the reason Tree Kin are so bad, one of the reasons they're so bad is their offensive stats are terrible. Like, they're literally 12 Saurus in terms of offensive stats. Like... <laughs> I wish I were joking, but that is how terrible they are in offense. They have 50 weapon strength and around 20-ish melee attack. I mean, that is literally the same as a Saurus. A single Saurus. So, you kind of see why Treekin builds tend to be not amazing. But uh, credit to where credit's due. This is holding out okay. Certainly, you can win just through attrition and defense sometimes. But the Elven Infantry definitely needs to be in here to dish some kind of damage on these champions. I mean, the balance power still is very close, and the outlast is kind of the, the idea here, right? Um, I, I would say against regular Marauders, that's going to work out pretty well, but the champions actually have pretty good defense. They do take a big breath attack there, but uh, champions, I mean, 53 melee defense, uh, only 30 melee attack on these Shriekin, even with that, uh, yeah, even with that going, but I mean, it's, it's just, it's poor. Their offensive stats are so bad. Doing all right, Caleb. Doing all right. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, we're just uh, watching this tree blob fight in the woods here. They're doing all right. I guess the Dryad can dish a little bit of damage as well with, with her splash attacks. There we go. Got a handful of Wild Rangers still fighting in here as well, so maybe all's not lost. The dragon's still relatively healthy also. It looks like the Skin Wolves, down to only six models, have been dealt with. Another Helm of Discord. This is very, very important. That melee defense debuff, especially on the champions, putting them down to 29, does mean that the 30 melee attack of the Treekin, all of a sudden, they actually have a decent chance to hit, like a 30% chance to hit. Uh, what is it? 35% is the base chance, I believe. So, yeah, that Helm of Discord, able to actually win and uh, I'm very impressed I consider Treekin to be one of the worst units in the game and it looks like Aristo might still be able to win with them I mean King of the Dead's not completely out of this though that uh, that boat that came in did a ton of damage was pretty decent and looks like the Glade Lord's also going to be coming in uh, Wolfric the Wanderer is fighting the Glady just tooth and nail here um, the he is unfortunately very surrounded um, but the Glady doesn't have a whole lot of armor, so if Wolfric can do his attacks on the Glady herself, he could potentially get a lot of damage in, but it looks like he's distracted by the Treeman, or the Treekin, rather. That being said, again, he's got he's got a lot of melee defense. He can just stand there and uh, weather those attacks from the tree Treekin all day, but we'll see. Kind of depends a little bit on army losses here. We've also got some Javelins coming in to potentially do some damage to the trees or to the Glady. These Wildwood Rangers are a problem, though. These 19 Wildwood Rangers. It does look like quite a few of these Norskin units are coming back from route, though. Javelins have pretty much used up all their ammunition here. Unfortunately, Wolfric is uh, now getting completely surrounded. That has actually started to take some hits from, like, the dragon from these Wildwood Rangers that are in here. Norskin units are going to try and come bail him out. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Not looking great for the Norskins at the moment, but they still got some tools fighting in here. Very, very pitched engagement here in the woods. A beautiful cinematic shot. These, these Norskins. Oh man, I love this game so much, guys. This is like this is like a perfect, perfect shot right here. In fact, I may even uh, let's let's enable that foliage so we get the full effect. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. Firebark elders definitely kind of bring some bring some nice red color to the scene. I mean, obviously there's all the blood and everything, but uh, that nice bright red and yellow kind of gives a little bit of a little bit of extra color. We even got what is this? Some lavender right here that this dead Norskin dude is in. And I, I know this is like a very pitched light game engagement here, but I don't think there's any way of Norska really finishing this off. Basically, the Treekin won by not dying, which is the only thing they're good at. <laughs> very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, that was wild, man. Good job, Aristo. I have to say, you made one of the best unit, uh, worst, worst units in the game work. But I mean, you can see the tiny, tiny kill totals here. Basically, again, the idea with these guys is they just hold out for long enough. And if you have other kill, other units that can get the killing power in, like that dragon, branch wraith got some good damage in the wildwood rangers, 61, 67, and 58. Considering how low model count this Norskin army was, that's pretty impressive. I have to say. Definitely pretty decent. Oh, so cool, cool. Wizards should be able to torch woods. In the in Three Kingdoms and in, in Attila, you can actually burn the forest down, but uh let's see here. That was a that was a cool build. Yeah. Um, okay, let's just get this here. I may need to do some shenanigans. Uh Let's see here. Wildwood Rangers, they're all right. They're just really squishy for the cost even still. But I mean, in a situation like that where they're being protected by trees, like literal trees and living trees, then you're in a better situation for sure. Mm hmm, 
Let's see here. We'll move this over here. This. Okay. Uh, da, 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 sorry, just getting some things taken care of behind the scenes here. On. Cool, cool. There's that. And here. Okay, and I actually... my game crashed through all of that, so that was cool. Um, <laughs> interesting. Alright, alright. around here cool get some things taken care of two in chat cool um yeah yeah i saw that key keeper yeah I, I got his message there um yeah risto i'll be there shortly i just uh i uh My game crashed, so I will be there shortly. Um, here we go. Oh, this map. Alright, <laughs> made it to 50. Huge thanks, man. So generous. I really, really appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. 50 likes, we did it. Thank you. Thank you for, for stumping for me. Much appreciated. Makes me feel very loved.
Hey, what's up, Lucas? Let's see. Cool people hit me up on the on the discords. Cool. <laughs> yeah, coming in with the heavy. Oh yeah, I should probably be I should probably be covering these builds right now. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's not actually my build, but Um Let's do Central Chaos Waste. That's a good, decently open map. It's got kind of one terrain feature right in the center, so yeah, that's a good one. I like this one. Cool. Yeah, we'll see. I'm genuinely interested to see. This is another interesting one for the Wood Elves. Um, yeah. Sorry, just uh, texting someone real quick. I get some more IRL things popping up. So, just give me just a second. High elves, yeah, that's no, that's uh, the high elves versus dwarves is very, very rough. Potentially, depends on what the high elves do. They can do some weird things, but uh, yeah. Uh, the the good news is aneurysm sauce. Me, this this IRL stuff basically means I'll be able to either stream or make more content or just all day is pretty much going to be YouTube today. So. It's good. 
a way. I just have to... I just have to, you know, respond to these things this time, rather than later. But by responding to it right now, it only takes me, what, a minute or two? Whereas responding to it later would take me much, much longer. So, yeah. These guys are still getting their armies locked in. Ah, a good question. Let's see here. how to reply in game in private message so I'm just going to send it to it on discord So we're all good then. Just, just quickly clarifying some things here. Okay, just making a quick clarification. I think we're all good here, but yeah, let's have a look. Let's have a look at these builds. I'll move the screen blocker. Here we go. And for the dwarves, we've got a lord and a runesmith. Looks like some dwarf warriors and slayers. Dragonback Slayers, pretty standard stuff. Got a couple of miners with blasting charges. A engineer, master engineer with a couple cannons. And a unit of thunderers, excuse me. As for the high elves, we've got uh, Lariel. Oh, sorry, not Lariel. A Lithanar, very fun. I like a Lithanar here. We do have a mage and a noble. Noble's on a chariot, of course. Mage is on horseback. Yep. A bunch of white lions and a bunch of archers. We've got five archers, I believe, in total. 
Yes. And then Illyrian Reavers, and uh, yeah. Pretty much uh, straightforward. We also have the Grey here. One of the worst regiments running out in the game by far because they are very cost and efficient. Yep, yep, yep. Was he expecting a dragon? Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, the cannons are also very good against chariots as well. I'm curious to see how this Master Engineer actually does against the single entity chariot there. Likewise, a Lithanar and the Grey. I believe the idea here is that he's going to try and snipe out the artillery pieces. Um, the Dawi cannons, right? That's kind of the idea. And then the archers come forward. White lions will trade pretty decently with most Dawi infantry as long as they don't take a face full of gunshot. Uh, and I mean, there's mostly just dwarf warriors here. Longbeards actually trade pretty cost effectively with white lions. It's kind of a toss up. Uh, Longbeards usually will lose, but sometimes they can win if they get really good RNG uh, from their melee defense. Kind of depends. Um, no. We have one noble, and he does not have the Star of uh, Averlorn. So, you have Lithnar. He is going to throw his Moonbow in here and immediately detonate one of the Dawi cannons, killing a few of the crew in the process. Most ignoble act. And then he himself is going to get blasted by a cannonball. It does like a... <laughs> Uh, not quite a quarter of his HP, maybe 20% of his HP in damage. That's hilarious. Oh, and another shot right to the face. Oh, man. Those Dawi cannons, man, with the with the engineer. I don't know. Does he? I don't think he has a passive effect, does he? Uh, he does have the Prospector Spyglass. Was that hitting that cannon? Because that was very, very accurate. And Lithnar's body double is going to come forward now. And oh man, <laughs> I don't know why Lithnar just getting cleaned out by the cannonballs makes me so happy. It probably shouldn't. But archers are going to come forward now. And again, to, the idea here is to take out Dawi cannons at a distance. Uh, the Thunderers are going to be returning fire here. Lithnar, the body double, gets danger close, but uh, he's mostly just trying to interrupt at this point. The cannons are going to open up on the archers, which is a decent uh, decent target. They can kill models there um, that can't then be healed. But uh, yeah, pretty good stuff so far. The Dawi infantry just kind of slowly making their way forward. They might get drawn into a bad engagement with those white lions, though. He has to be careful. He doesn't necessarily want to run in and just one-to-one -one attack those white lions. But pushing forward here and keeping the archers from being in range of the cannons is going to be pretty important. But oh man, the secret agent here, the Loic Shroud, suddenly it's popped, and the cannons, the cannons, the gray, the gray. The funny thing is if these Ironbreakers turned around, they could probably get in range to throw a single charge of blasting charges and, uh, and probably clean out those gray in like one volley, but... Unfortunately, it does look like the cannons are probably going to be taken out. Alithnar finishing off the one, and the other being finished off the gray here. Now, Dawi is getting pulled a little bit out of position. You can see the Noble Chariot starting to come forward there. And, uh, yeah, these Iron Breakers aren't too happy about what has just transpired. That being said, the gray have done their damage and are now going to be able to retreat, possibly do some skirmishing with those Slayers as well. The uh, Master Engineer making his way forward a little bit, and... Good fire coming in on Lithnar. He has pretty low HP, but yeah, you can see how these Dwarf Warriors, when they get a little bit far ahead of the rest of their supporting troops, they do get uh, hit by those White Lions there. The White Lions, again, trade pretty decently, and the Longbeards, obviously, are going to be a little bit tougher, so the, uh, the Noble will come over there. You can see the uh, Master Engineer going to start to have a little bit of a shootout with uh, Lithnar. Likewise, the Thunderers also. Thunderers probably want to start actually shooting at the White Lions if they can. But, um, yeah, Dwarf Forces are a little bit spread out at the moment. We'll see. Taking out Lithnar, definitely going to be pretty important, but uh, Lithnar has done most of what he's going to do already. Um, like, his relatively low missile damage isn't really a big risk to any of the Dawi characters here, for the most part. But, um, yeah. White Lions. Able to get some good engagements here on Dwarf Warriors in some various places. 
And uh, yeah, looks like the ballistics calibration giving some extra accuracy and reload skill. Are they going to try and focus fire and finish off a Lithnar here? It does look like probably that's the case. Blasting charges being used here against these uh, White Lions. Do some pretty decent damage there. But uh, might want to honestly just start focusing on this Noble Chariot here. I think he's maybe a little bit over-focused on trying to finish off Lithnar. He got some good damage initially, but yeah, Noble Chariot definitely needs to be center of uh, focus fire here. You can see the Slayers coming forward, kind of uh, help support here. The Slayers, Dragonback Slayers could potentially run in and interrupt these White Lines, but it looks like the Blasting Charge is actually going to be thrown from those Iron Drakes there, or the Iron Breakers rather. They'll do some okay damage. Unfortunately, Iron Breakers don't have the most amazing melee stats. I mean, they're pretty good. 68 melee defense in particular is very, very strong, but uh, yeah. Here comes the Lord with the uh, Runesmith here. He's got a pretty good engagement on some White Lions there. Slayers are running in to try and deal with the Noble, but things are looking pretty good for the High Elves for the moment. Risto is kind of able to uh, pick apart the Dwarves a little bit here using that mobility and that uh, kind of mid-range, long-range, right? Elf bows, very long-range um, for their class. And... Use that to the advantage here. We've been running two soundtracks the whole time and I didn't even notice. I am so good at this, guys. Really gotta turn my headphones up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, dwarves lo losing artillery that fast is rough. Definitely is. Definitely is. This is a little bit of a rough matchup for the dwarves. There are definitely some things you can do. Um, I actually really like the pick of the engineer here. I might even take two engineers, honestly. Um, like, I, I might even just swap one of those cannons out for an engineer. Um, because they are pretty good at kind of picking away at the noble chariots and then in the late game oftentimes you're you're left with like a character box and in that situation the engineer he's doesn't have the best stats in the world but i mean he has armor piercing and melee he can punch the chariot if, if, if it comes close he can shoot it with his gun so i like i like that pick quite a bit but yeah the rest um, honestly the army's not too bad overall it's pretty standard standard fare for the dwarves but i think yeah, maybe a little more range stopping power not tied to the cannons. So yeah, maybe you cut one cannon and just take a uh, secondary engineer. Not really sure. I'm definitely not a Dawi expert by any means, but... It's going in the book. Yep. I'm gonna have to uh, take a break here relatively soon to eat, but we'll be back. Um, I've got one more here. We've got Papa Palpatine and Key Keeper, actually. So we've got two more, two more matches, and then I'm going to be taking a break, and we'll probably come back with some more Helm and Gorse campaign um, from yesterday. Oh yeah, I, I I think the engineers are fantastic. Very very good unit. Yeah, he did say he wanted to practice this matchup, learn it a little more, and he did pretty decently. I would say the targeting priority is the biggest thing. Um, that's uh, when you're playing dwarfs, the number one number one concept you have to learn is targeting priority. And you know, he was able to get some initial shots on the Lithonar, which was pretty good. But I think using the range tools to focus on the noble chariot, I would say. Probably your best bet. I mean, he does have healing for the Noble Chariot, but... But, uh... Yeah. Like, the... Engineer and the Thunders, the Cannons, if all of them manage to get, like, a good opening volley on the Chariots, I don't know. The, the Noble Chariot? It's tough. It's definitely tough. It's, with the healing, especially, but... And obviously, I mean, in the infantry fight, you're going to be a little bit outclassed versus White Lions. Um, maybe you would take... I might actually just take... I don't know. I'd have to kind of think about this matchup a little bit. It's probably changed since I, when I played it last. I don't play Dowie super often, but... Hey, what's up, man? Good to see you. All right, all right. Thanks for joining, Dan. Much appreciated. A uh, good showing. Considering, uh, yeah, if you consider yourself a newer player, I would say you're on the right on the right track, definitely. 
Uh, like I said, maybe I would probably cut these iron breakers, um, just because that would allow you to go a little bit wider with some more missiles. Um, I do like the pick of the two slayers. I'd probably... Oh, where'd he go? Oh, I see. Aristo had to, Aristo had to step out. No worries. Uh, yeah, so um, maybe I would have just cut... Hmm, I don't know. Ah, uh, the runesmith. Having the runesmith is really, really nice. I might have cut the lord for a rune lord, and then cut this runesmith for uh, another engineer. Probably cut one cannon for a troll hammer torpedo. And then maybe cut this to like two miners with blasting charges. Something else? I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know. I'd have to kind of think about it a little bit. It's an interesting matchup. Oh, my bad, Papa Palpatine. I'm so sorry. I just let Keykeeper in. I'm so sorry. I will uh I will add you. Yeah, keep keep just snuck in here, but let me let me get you added here, and we'll we'll make sure we'll make sure we get you in. Sometimes I'm bad at counting. Um. Okay. Here. Okay, so the invite is sent, so you can at least uh, check this here, so. Um, I think we'll be okay, let's see. Yeah, we're only doing one more at the moment, so we should be alright. We we can we can get him in no problem. Like if this was um uh, Yeah, that's no big deal. If if Palpatine was under a time constraint, I'm assuming he would have told me, but yeah. We're all just chilling. No, nothing really to do. That play some more hammer, right? <laughs> So, let's see. Um, all right, so. <laughs> Aristo, you're totally right. You're totally right. Eight archers is a terrible thing to do to a new player. An ad for neutral system plays? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I maybe it knows that I go to the gym. I don't know that I am trying to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I, I yeah. I mean the runes are okay. I do think that they could are they retooling the items for the dwarves is like always always gonna be good. But um, yeah. Let's do this. I should probably probably do this. Um, like that. They still 
have a few items that seem like close to useless. Um, but I, I don't know. Rune Lords are pretty cost effective. Yeah, they're they're just it. Yeah, it'd be cool if they had like a, a legendary Rune Lord who is like a good like caster melee hybrid. So they almost had like a like a Malekith or like a you know like a what's his Baldfred type character. Um. So like uh yeah, like a hybrid. A hybrid caster melee lord. And I know the rune lords are already kind of that because they have like heavy armor, but they they have such terrible stats. They have such such bad, bad stats. And I mean, granted, for the effects that they give you, like Grom Brindle has his smoke bomb, which is not nearly as useful, I would say, or as flexible, maybe is a better word. Uh not nearly as flexible as, say, the Rune Lords Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Um, being that it's only at close range, but it does have the additional component of melee defense, and Grom Brundle himself is a monster combatant. So, yeah. A viable legendary lord? <laughs> Makes sense, Kiro. Makes sense. Gotrek. Gotrek is a good pick for anyone. I... Uh, for, uh, I should say, for the, the dwarves, against pretty much everyone, Gotrek is going to be a good pick. Um, uh, yeah. Greenskins are super fun to play. They are very, very vulnerable. Um, but... Uh, like, they're very hard to use, but they're super flexible, right? Their roster is is wildly well-balanced. No, I wouldn't say wildly well-balanced. It's wild, for sure. But it is well-balanced and wild. And, like, they just... They, they have such flexibility that you can do some hilarious, hilarious things with greenskins. The low leadership and the easy, easily snipeable lords is a problem. If once... Uh, not if, once that gets addressed, because, I mean, it's not guaranteed. There hasn't been any official, I wouldn't say it's guaranteed until there's been an official announcement from Creative Assembly, but it's virtually guaranteed that we're getting a Grom the Paunch DLC for Greenskins, right? So, let's say a Regenerating Chariot Lord a la Volkmar. Volkmar is one of the most competitive lords for the Empire, um, and I mean, he obviously he's unbreakable. I don't know that Grom the Paunch will be unbreakable, but having a regenerating Chariot Lord is just going to be so, so strong. So strong. Yeah, I love that the spiders are good now. I really, really would like for the Goblin Great Shaman to get an Arachnorok spider mount, please, still. I, I really, really would like that. Right now, he only has the wolf. Speaking of which, we've got one right here. A very, very fun choice for Lord, and allows you to go super wide, uh, which is what we have here. We've got trolls, we've got goblins, we've got black orcs, biggins, orc error boys, rusty errors. We've got the Hammer of Gork. Two goblin big bosses, are they on wolves? They are on wolves. Good stuff. We've got up in the air here a high beast master for key keeper. We've got some witch elves, a nice wide build here as well. Uh, Scourge runner chariots, we've got some spears, Hellebroni, Harganeth executioners, bleak swords, dark riders, some repeater crossbows with a death caster. Some more scourge runners. Both of these players, I like their builds quite a bit. Both like wide. Um, I, the one thing for this Greenskins build is it does lack terror. That being said, Greenskins don't have that many sources of terror. They're all relatively expensive, so... Just going with the ultra-wide instead, but let's see, let's see how it, uh, how it does here. 
right? <laughs> I I have forgotten several times in the past. Getting some polite good luck have funds exchanged. And here we go. Same map as before, but that's fine. I'm a big fan of this Central Chaos Waste map. Don't know if they're waiting on me, but yeah, start when ready. And right off the bat, Scourge Runners are opening up on those Gobbo boys that are parked up on the hill here. But because of the slope, they're actually going to be probably doing a little bit of overshooting. Um, but oh, there's a Gobbo. A single Gobbo. Rest in peace. And another single Gobbo. Well, at this rate, we'll be here all day. <laughs> the Scourge Runners only pick off one Goblin individually at a time. Over here, though, we get a Vanguard situation where these Dark Riders do get crumped a little bit by some Spider Riders. The Goblin Big Boss comes in with the Slippery active and actually gets a pretty good chunk out of these guys. His little splash attacks, believe it or not, against a light unit like these Dark Riders actually going to be very, very helpful. So, look at that little Gobbo leading his Gobbos to victory. These Dark Riders do have shields, as we can see, but uh, <laughs> slaps him randomly. <laughs> Anyway, we got some biggins over here, kind of uh, helping to come reinforce. The uh, Wolf Rider Archers do get engaged a little bit by those Dark Riders, and you can see the uh, Dark Rider Repeater Crossbows also trying to make their way up and around here, but the Greenskins are going to be able to stabilize, and unfortunately, it looks like this big boss did get terrified away by the High Beastmaster, came in for a quick Beast Slaver hit and run. I like that quite a bit. The Beastmaster up on the Manticore is actually a pretty cost-effective unit, but a nice wall being popped as there's a few kind of pitched engagements around these goblins fighting bleak swords. And then up here on the high ground as well, the Spider Riders getting a little bit caught up by some spears. Wolf Rider Archers getting some point-blank fire in there, and the goblins also engage. Harganeth Executioners, that's not going to go great for them, but they'll at least be able to hold them in place for some time. Got uh, the Hammer of Gork here. Firing at the Dark Riders with the Repeater Crossbows. It does give the blind effect, so that will significantly lower their accuracy. You can see the Scourge Runners also taking some fire from the Air Boys. They've got decent enough AP values. And, uh, yeah, Trolls unfortunately getting terrified away, but they did manage to do a ton of damage to those Cold One Knights and probably paid for themselves in that alone. And, uh, yeah, getting the support of some biggins here. The Trolls come back point blank. Should be able to get back in the fight very quickly. Meanwhile, in the center, you can see the uh, Black Orcs protecting the Catapult. Managed to beat back some Dark Riders there. These uh, Scourge Runners, Danger Close, Gork will fix it. And the Wolf Riders are also going to come engage them in melee here. And that means they're going to be mostly tied up. <laughs> I love that the Hammer of Gork is the one just responding to these Dark Riders. But uh, yeah, uh, poor Gobble Boy is getting beat up by some uh, nasty spears. So the Black Orcs come through. They're going to bail out their boss here probably had a little bit of wild regeneration active there but here comes the beastmaster this is potentially a nasty little lord snipe right as murderous prowess kicks in too with the beast slaver active he's up to 557 69 69 very nice in terms of stats and just a quick one two punch does eliminate that dark uh the, the goblin big boss pretty much he's not completely out of it yet but a spirit leech will probably keep him from coming back that being said the balance of power is still very very close and look at this high beastmaster just getting shredded by Bowfire. Just a few volleys in there does a lot of his HP and damage. And uh, yeah, the Black Orc still protecting this catapult here. We've still got plenty of Spider Riders, Trolls, Biggins coming back from the side here. So there's still a lot of Greenskin units left on the field despite the uh, losses to their leadership units. I mean, there are very, very cheap leadership units at that, right? And Witch Elves just enraging Trolls into themselves, which is probably not the best thing to do, but they do have the support of some... Uh, Leak swords here, so they're not completely alone. Likewise, spider riders are going to be poisoning the witch elves and those bleak swords, so it's just a nasty, nasty fight. But this is not an engagement you see terribly often, just because these units are not at all meant to fight each other. But I mean, that doesn't mean that they can't fight each other, certainly. Trolls, smash witch elves, just the same. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, right on cue. <laughs> ah, beautiful. I love trolls. 
can see these Black Orcs, they're going to get a little bit uh, surrounded here. This is a really bad situation for them. Harganath Executioners and then the two Bleak Swords on both sides. Not a great time for the boys here. That's probably going to spell the end of them, and likewise, still very, very close on the balance of power. The Greenskins did have a slight little lead there, almost looked like, but the balance of power now swinging back to basically dead even. And now these uh, these Wolf Rider Archers, the Beastmaster has 80 armor, which is a pretty good amount, but the Wolf Rider Archers can still do a good amount of damage there. These regenerating trolls are also going to be a bit of a problem. Thankfully, the one over here that was fighting the Witch Elves did get dealt with, but... Uh, Another unit of Black Orcs came back from route. Looks like they're chopping up this Scourge one. The Scourge, Scourge one. <laughs> Scourge Runner Chariot and the Hellobronai with their pretty pink shields. They... They'll be okay. They'll do all right. Maybe not, but at least they have the Witch Elves here to support. Spider Riders coming back around as well. Um... Yeah, the eight peak loonies, of course, going to be completely unbreakable. They get enraged into the witch elves, but they actually have good enough stats that they won't trade terribly into the witch elves because they're poison and they're way higher model count. You can see how each witch elf is having to fight like three or four goblins at a time. It's just really not a great situation for them, so... Goblins will probably be able to win out on that engagement up on the hill, it's hard to say, but this has just been an absolute scrap, man. Probably best game of the day, and uh, these bleak swords barely contacting goblins, routing them away. The, uh, the High Beastmaster getting a good charge, terrifying away some of those Wolf Riders, but then he himself gets massacred by trolls. A few big stagger hits in there. The Beastmaster just getting kicked and stomped on by angry trolls and just clubbed in the face. That is a brutal, brutal set of attacks there. A little bit of friendly fire from the uh, Gobos, which is to be expected, but they just now used up the last of their ammunition, so they can uh, now switch into melee mode. We've also got a handful of Orc Airboys still over here, but man, those Executioners... Executioner is very, very healthy still, but, oh, the trolls, the trolls could be the carry here. They get a good charge on those executioners, and then immediately pull away. Trying to take advantage of that regeneration, I guess, maybe reunify with some of these forces over here. It looks like the Beastmaster coming down to terrorize what remains of the Rusty Errors. There are still a few Goblin Wolf Rider Archers there, but over here, meanwhile, Greenskins have taken a pretty commanding lead on this side of the battlefield with the Spider Riders finishing off these Scourge Runner Chariots. There's still some Black Orcs here. They're still regenerating trolls as well. The, uh, the Hammer of Gork crew is still here, so if somehow he can re-secure, I mean, the artillery pieces are still right here. They're all three still intact, so in theory, he could rally this crew together get back on top of that piece, and then just bomb those Harganeth Executioners to extinction. I think that's kind of the, the win condition here at this point for the Greenskins, is to try and rally back to that artillery piece. I don't think these Black Orcs have enough by themselves. I mean, obviously with support they could win, but I don't think those Black Orcs will have enough to defeat the Harganeth Executioners in melee, so definitely getting the Hammer of Gork uh, back online would be a huge, huge boon. But thankfully the Spider Riders... The, mo the mobility advantage is pretty clearly at this point in the Greenskin's favor. And meanwhile, way over on the side of the map, we actually get some units coming back from route. These trolls probably going to get terrified away very quickly here. But at the very least, they came in and did some key damage to these Bleak Swords. Will the Bleak Swords route? It looks like they're going to stabilize their leadership. Unfortunately, the, uh, the trolls and the Spider Rider is probably going to route immediately away there. Trolls, for some reason, route in the opposite direction, which is just hilarious. They're absolutely trolling. Absolutely trolling. When these biggins as well come back from route over here, suddenly they've got the sorceress cornered, and, uh, of course, she's on a horse, so she's subject to anti-large damage. Man, what a scrap. What an absolute scrap. I'm not sure if, uh... If Dan realizes that the artillery pieces are still here being uh, remountable, but it looks like these Black Orcs are going to take that engagement against those Executioners, which is not something that they probably should do. Yeah, it looks like realizing he's still got some supporting units over here, which he can rally with. He's going to start to uh, regroup with the Trolls and the AP Gloons. Man, both sides just completely exhausted at this point. Got the biggins over here. And yeah, man, what a wild battle. What a wild battle.
we still got one more after this, folks. But man, that was a, that was a great one, and we still got this gobble big boss here for Dan. Still gonna be fighting. But it uh, looks like the Mantor is going to come and interrupt these Black Orcs before they can kind of reunify with the rest of these troops here. The Eight Peak Loons and the Trolls rushing back into position. We've even got some Spider Riders now up on the high ground. The uh, Gobble Big Boss will chase away those Spears, but here come Manticore, the Executioners, Sorceress, Tormentor Sword, in fact, even on the Black Orcs, freezes them in place. Does not allow them to move and significantly debuffs their melee attack as well. So that as these Harganeth Executioners come in, not only will the Black Orcs not get their charge bonus, but they also... Oh man, but here comes the Beastmaster. He gets impacted by the Trolls. Spider Rider's running in from the other side, so this could be the end for him. The Trolls, will they get the attacks to actually win here? The Beastmaster, it looks like he actually terrifies them away. Oh man, that's so unfortunate for the Greenskins there. <clears throat> oh, that Fanatics though. The Fanatics! Beautiful Fanatics cast does quite a bit of damage to those Harganeth Executioners. That was actually very impressive. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, to win here. The Biggins are still still here, but they'll they'll be terrified away pretty easily. These trolls are still regenerating. I don't think they're going to come back though. This this Gabo. Man, that Beastmaster is so low. Yeah, it looks like the Hammer of Gork crew shatters. But likewise, this Sorceress might also rout. She's trying to keep these Black Orcs routing. But she herself is now being chased by the Eight Peak Loons. We've just got the most ridiculous Benny Hill situation here. Oh man, Spider Riders making a risky charge. Oop, and they immediately nope out of that. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think this is pretty much, pretty much over, but we'll see. Yeah, it looks like the Sorceress's leadership is somewhat stabilized, and, uh... Trolls come back. Loons might have another Fanatics cast at this point. <laughs> and the longer they keep chasing, the more they're gonna have more Fanatics. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Those executioners. Oh, uh, it's hilarious. Gobble Big Boss looks like he's coming. He he could finish off this sorceress. I mean, he has the stats. He has the power. He's been spirit leeched though. And the slippery. Oh, he's up to 114 speed. Look at that blazing fast Gobbo just just screaming in here. All angry. And nope, he nopes out. <laughs> While he's chasing her, he nopes out. And then it's just just the biggins then. And the, and the loons. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's so sad. That's so sad. Yeah, the, the executioners. Yeah, they probably needed the hammer of the gork from the start. But it is what it is. This Beastmaster gonna be taking the day here. Man, that was a scrap, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, that was a Spirit Leech. It was indeed a Spirit Leech. Oh, and the loons! The loons! <laughs> they actually routed the sorceress! <laughs> Ah, she couldn't take it. She couldn't take the loon. The AP loons are too strong. <laughs> yeah, that was a scrap, man. That was a that was a scrap unlike many others. <laughs> oh, I couldn't find the catapult. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's tough on that on that uh red background. Yeah, that was wild, man. Super good game on both sides. Absolutely knock down, drag out. Two very wide builds. It's great fun. Great, great fun.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was wild. That was super wild. Two Shrines of Cain and or Chill of Sontar. Uh, yeah. I could see that working okay, depending on the build. As long as you don't come up against all of the Daka. <laughs> All right, so we'll get uh, we'll get Papa Palpatine in here in just a minute. All right, and and he's out, and Pop Palpatine is coming. All right, oh man, yeah, I need to do some yoga after this. But uh, been a day. It's been a day. Okay. All right, all right. Pop Palpatine. Alright, alright. So, hopefully you guys have been enjoying today. I know I've I've had a great time. Yeah, I'm going to be taking a break. We'll probably come back in about an hour or so. Um I'll I'll make a stream like a, a new stream and so you guys can see when it's coming back. Um we're going to be doing some Helm and Gorst campaign, I think. But yeah, I got to go get some lunch, take care of a couple things. Yeah, it's, uh... It's a good time. You know, it's a wild world out there. It's a good time to be alive, though. Happy, happy you all are here with me. Can't wait for Chaos Dwarves. Oh man, I'm so excited for Game 3. Just all the Game 3 stuff. Norska it is. Alright. Off of Palpatine going for the Norska. Norska versus Beastmen should be a, a very bloody fight. Beastmen can kind of play hit and run. So can Norska. But, I mean, obviously they're both... Ugh, excuse me. Getting getting yawny. Um Glacial Lake. <laughs> Make it quick, huh? Yeah. Um I just totally lost my train of thought. Anyway. Playable kids live. I would buy like ten copies of game three and give them out. <laughs> Dogs of War would be so good as well. I agree. I agree. 
Well, Jabba, unfortunately, this is the last match for the day for the King of the Hill. Um, I'm going to be streaming more tomorrow, though. So, if you want uh, to be abreast on the information as to when these things will be going down. Be sure to join this Discord, and I'll be making announcements in here. This is the uh, community tournament Discord in general, so if you just are looking to find some good players to play with, you want to learn more about multiplayer, um, join other tournaments, King of the Hills, whatever, that's a great place to do it. I'd love a mercenary mechanic. I know, after the new... <laughs> oh my goodness, after the new... Um, the new Three Kingdoms DLC, like Lubu, right? He has a mercenary mechanic where you can like sell cities to um like people can buy you like buy your services basically and you can like sell cities to them as you take them i could see definitely them doing some kind of dogs of war with a mechanic like that where other quote-unquote order type factions can hire you out to go do things for them i think that'd be awesome Yeah, I think we're going to come back with some Gorst campaign. And I'll probably stream that for maybe another three hours-ish this afternoon. And then, if I have time, I may end up working instead on my tier list. But I, yeah, I think I'm going to do that this evening. I don't think I'll worry about streaming this evening. We'll be streaming more tomorrow. And, like, every day. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> oh, fun, fun. Oh, oh no, no. No, my game is crashing. My game is crashing. It is in the process of crashing. <laughs> uh, I clicked on the chat and it was too much. Great for filling holes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hired mercenaries tab as well. I could see that. I could see that. The thing about Dogs of War is that some of their units are ogres. I want to say, like, they'll probably make some of the like the I. I don't. I don't have any evidence, right? I don't have any insider information. This is a hundred percent tinfoil hat speculation. But if they wanted to differentiate the Dogs of War or the Southern Realms faction and make them unique. From, you know, the other human factions, what they could do is make them more monster-oriented. Now, there are ogre mercenary units, right? And currently, none of the human factions, there are two of them, neither of them <laughs> have, um... Oh no! Oh no, they started without me. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I was just going to say, like, none of the, they, they could have monsters infantry in a human faction, right? Like, you could have kind of, like, almost a monster-oriented human faction in the Dogs of War, um, because they could get, like, mercenary dragons, right? I think there's some lore context for that. You could get the ogres, right? You could get, like, uh, maybe, like, combine different things from different factions, because they're all mercenaries, right? So, um...
yeah. <laughs> well, I think this is the end. <laughs> Unfortunately, my game crashed and I did not notify them in time, or they didn't notice in time. <laughs> So, apologies about that, guys. I can see they're on Glacial Lake. Yeah, see, Dogs of War include a High Elf Lord who exiled himself. See, so they could have, like, literally, like, a High Elf Legendary Lord in a human faction. I think that'd be cool. I would play that. Birdman. <laughs> uh... The Doves of War. There we go. There we go. Yep. Yep, yep. It's an old one. Um, let me see if I can find the Birdmen. Ah, yes, the Birdman of Kat Katraza. Here we go. Here we go. This is a thing. I have verified this is a thing. Here is a link for proof. It is a thing. I don't know... I don't know how they would work. They'd be like a flying melee unit, I guess? I, what are they holding in their hands? I can't even tell. Let's, let's look at this on stream for a minute, for everyone. Um, so... I zoom in? How do I, how do I zoom in? I'm so bad at internet. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> What are they holding in their hands? Are they holding handguns? Are they holding... It looks like they're holding pistols, and then this guy's got a sword, but I can't really tell. Are they holding crossbows? Mengil's manhide man flares? Yeah. Human doom divers. Essentially, that's what it looks like. Except they actually have kind of cool helmets. But I think, I honestly think that they're holding pistols or crossbows. I think they might be a ranged unit. This guy's for sure got a sword in the front, but. I mean, we got war wagons, guys. This isn't out of the realm of possibility, I'm going to say. Yeah, dogs of war. Dogs of War would be fun. Would be fun. I think they'll probably have a ton of regiments of renown if they end up doing a Dogs of War. I don't know that they ever will, but I can't see them not doing it if they're going to make money from it, right? <laughs> oh, Risto, you're worried about things like science <laughs> and physics. <laughs> Ah, yes, the lobby is open back up.
Cool. So yeah, Keykeeper is going to toss me the replay. And we can watch that. Make sure we get this last game in. <laughs> cool. But we'll go download that and watch it real quick. Let me go over here and grab that. It will toss it in the replay folder. Cool. Right? Those must be... Well, let's smack my mic real quick. Must be some dwarf... Dwarf construction wings, probably. I'd imagine. Anyway, let's quickly pause here because we're on Glacial Lake and we need to make sense of the absolute anarchy that's unfolding. <laughs> We've got several groups of centigors here uh, close to the, the edge of the map along with the Mazda Savagery and the Beast of Tashnar. So... That's a mess. Uh, we've got a bunch of gore herds with shields up front, a secondary line of Ungor Raiders, we've got some Razor Gore Herds, Shaman Laura Beasts, Borger the Shadow Gave, Butchers of Kalkengard, and Centigors. As for Norska, straight up the pipe, we've got Throg, War Mammoth, a Balefiend Lore of Fire, uh, a couple of Berserkers, a couple of regular Marauders, and Skin Wolves, more Skin Wolves. So, let's get things going with this big old Vanguard action over here. Maws of Savagery running in, Beasts of Tashnar running in. The Maws of Savagery, if they get their leadership broken, could potentially get rounded off here, but it looks like they are able to stabilize their leadership mostly. Uh, they are taking quite a bit of damage, but dishing some serious damage in return. Then the rest of the Beastmen units follow up, and this has got to be a bad time, I'd imagine. These Norskin units way out on the side. Meanwhile, in the center, though, some of the Gores are starting to get absolutely mashed on by the, uh, the War Mammoth here. And Throg coming through as well, just absolutely massacring these infantry. We've got some Skin Wolves coming over to attack this Bray Shaman Lore of Beasts. The uh, Butchers of Kalkengard are going to come over. I'd imagine this Manticore will probably immediately drop a rear charge there on the Skin Wolves as well. So, uh, pretty back and forth engagement, but yeah, this is really, really bad. Maws of Savagery immediately being broken. Beasts of Tashnar immediately being broken. That's two pretty expensive units, more than 2,000 points immediately down the drain there. Uh, they did manage to kill some Centigors for their cost, but not cost effective at all. Meanwhile, these Skin Wolves do get surrounded by the, uh, what initially seemed to be a very good pick getting on that Bray Shaman. Suddenly turns into a trap when the Butchers of Kalkengar, the Pharaoh Manticore, and even Morgur himself comes through, absolutely cleans up shop. Now, the Norskins are pushing forward in the front line a little bit here. The War Shrine's relatively healthy, Frog's relatively healthy, they're beating up these Chaos Spawn just fine. But here comes the Bull Rush. Going to come in here and do a ton of damage to those Marauders, likewise, uh, probably on Throg himself. The Manticore comes in, and the, uh, the Mammoth is trying to get in the back line to shut down these Ungor Raiders. Uh, secretly, Ungor Raiders are the most powerful unit in the game, if you didn't already know. Uh, so that is a pretty good pick there to try and shut them down. But that does leave him a little bit exposed and isolated away from supporting elements. Over here, you can see these uh, infantry, these Berserkers, got ca caught way out in the open. Granted, they're doing a ton of damage to these Razor Gore, the Gore Herds there. But uh, yeah... Looking like a pretty quick victory for the Beastmen as they're able to weather the storm of Norska. And that initial kind of vanguard situation with the Centigors and the, the Beasts of Tashnar and the Skin Wolves over there on the side, obviously a very key part of that engagement. The War Shrine now eating a bunch of throwing axes and uh, Frog, despite his regeneration. I mean, the Butchers of Kalkengard also have regeneration, right? And so does Morgur, so it's just a big regenerating mess of monsters. And a nice burning head comes through, roasts out some of those Ungor Raiders. They are, of course, wildly overpowered, so uh, that's probably a good thing to do. But uh, no, not really, guys. I'm not being serious. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, Throg just getting terrified, getting absolutely worked on by that Manticore and by the Butchers of Kalkengard. Uh, 
Boar Shrine Mammoth will probably continue to fight for some time here. It's got a good amount of HP left. Looks like the Bray Shaman got shattered by something. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, Skin Wolves come through. Again, trying to shut down the OP on Gore Raiders. It's not quite going to be enough. Mammoth very quickly getting surrounded here. Trying to beat up these Minotaurs, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, that Vanguard was very unlucky. Yeah, yeah, a rough situation there. A rough situation, and uh, when I... Not always, but oftentimes when I Vanguard, like, you can see when you're in your deployment zone, like, there's a... You, you kind of have to estimate, but you can see how there's a gap between where you can Vanguard and when your opponent's deployment starts. Um, so if you kind of think about that on your own side, like, you also have that little bit of a gap, but you, you can actually deploy in so that you don't... You, you know, you're guaranteed not to vanguard immediately on top of each other. But still, a very good game to both players. A well played to Key Keeper there. Uh, staying calm and reacting very well to that nasty vanguard situation. His front line got absolutely clobbered there. But Boaches of Kalkengard actually getting a few key surrounds on some skin wolves. Uh, we're able to kind of carry the day there. Likewise, the reinforcing of the Razorgore herds out to the side where those Centigores were holed up. A very timely engagement there. Able to get some excellent rear charges and clean up shop. And, uh, yeah, the Skin Wolves are really good in this matchup, but I think the Armored Skin Wolves are probably the way you want to go. I don't know. These regular ones just kind of get torn apart a little bit here. The Mirror are also very good in this matchup, uh, from what I've found. But, yeah, it's an interesting one. Yeah, always a gamble on these small maps, for sure. For sure. <laughs> GG. GG, indeed. Thank you to everyone who came out. It was a huge, huge pleasure. Uh, we've got lots of generous donations again from Tamton. You're making me a, a very, very wealthy man. So thank you. Not really, but uh, all the generosity is much appreciated. And yeah, we're going to be back in about an hour, maybe hour and 15, with some Helmengorst fast campaign. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for joining, and we'll see you in just a little bit. Bye now.